Hi everybody, welcome back. So today is day 27 of the Daily Arithmetic Challenge. Okay, on the screen now are your first six questions for you to have a go at. There are a couple more on the next slide, but actually because this is the end of the paper, we're going to do some reasoning questions. Once you've had a go at doing all of them all together, press play and we'll go through the answers. Okay, time to go through the answers. Nice and straight. Okay, so let's look at number 31. So nice and straightforward, we've got 19 subtract 3 multiplied by 4. So if you think about it in terms of order of operations, the first thing that you do is your multiplication. So you're doing 3 multiplied by 4, which is 12, I've written the answer underneath. And then you've got 19 subtract 12, which is 7. Number 32 is the straightforward multiplication grid method. Um, as you can see, I always circle my tens number to make sure that I remember to put my zero down when I multiply by that digit. So you're multiplying 1,643 by 9, first of all, and then 1,643 by 8. But remember, obviously, that's really 18, not 8, which is why we pop our zero there. And then last but not least, you add together the two numbers that you've got as your answer. Uh, number 33, we've got 95% of 480. Now for this one, I would simply recommend finding 5% of 480. You can do that by finding 10% and then halving it, which I've done down below. So 5% is 24. And then subtracting 24 uh, from 480, because obviously if we took 5% away from 100%, we would get 95%. So the answer is 456. Number 34, we've got uh, 3510 divided by 78 make sure you write out your multiples of 78 we don't expect you to know that times table off the top of your head you could literally add on every time if you needed to just to make sure that you're not going to make any mistakes and then you would just do your straightforward division as we've looked at in the past to get the answer 45 number 35 you have got uh, 5 eighths divided by 4 so it's going to be a KFC method and I would always recommend turning your whole 4 into 4 over 1 so that you've got both of them as fractions and then if we do KFC we keep the first fraction the same which is 5 eighths we flip the operation symbol from a division to a multiplication and then we change our last fraction which will be 4 over 1 and we turn it into 1 over 4 or 1 quarter and then you simply multiply your numerators and multiply your denominators 1 times 5 is 5 and 4 times 8 is 32. Number 36 you have got 2 and 1 half subtract 3 fifths. So for this one the first thing that I would do is get rid of my whole number and turn it into an improper fraction. So that would become 3 over 2. I would then multiply to get my denominator up to 10. So I would multiply uh, 2 by 5 to get to 10, which means that I then multiply my numerator by 5, which would give me 15, and then I have got 15 subtract 3 over 10, because obviously, sorry, 6 over 10, because it was 3 fifths, so it is now 6 over 10 to get my answer. In a class walk around their local area, the graph shows how far they had travelled from school during the visit. How far were the children from school at 10.20? So for this one, obviously it's a little bit easier if this was on a piece of paper and you could use a ruler to be sure, but if we look up from where 10.20 is, you're going to become in line with where your line meets 600 metres away from school. And then B is slightly harder for how long are the children at least 500 metres away from school. So basically it means how long were they 500 metres or more away from school. So if we have a look at where our line goes through 500 metres and we take it down to our time, we can see that actually it lands between 10.10 and 10.20. Well that will obviously mean that they left, they got further than 500 metres at about 10.15. After that, they spend the whole time more than 500 metres away because as you can see it's greater than 500 metres and eventually it returns to 500 metres at about uh, 1050. You can see that on your grid. So for how long were the children at least 500 metres away from school? So if they left, if they got further than 500 metres away at 1015 and they came back at 1050, it means that they were away for a total of 35 minutes. Now, because this is on a screen and it is harder for you to see, if you told me that they were between 35 and 45 minutes, I will be fine with that one today. 
Number eight, a shop sells t-shirts and shorts for the following prices. £3.25 for tops and £4.99 for trousers. A mother buys three t-shirts and a pair of shorts for her son. She pays with a £10 and a £5 note. What coins could she be given as change? So the first thing we need to do is find out how much she spent. So she's bought three tops. So you can see I've done £3.25 multiplied by three and got the answer £9.75. Then we have to add on the pair of trousers that she bought at 4 99 so in total she spent £14.74. Um, we then know she paid with a £10 note and a £5 note which is £15 in total. £15 take away £14.74 gives me 26p which is the amount of change she's going to get. So as long as you've told me any number of coins which add together to make 26 so for example you may have done a 20p a 5p and a 1p or you may have done two 10ps and six 1ps or you may have done um five at uh, four five p's to make the 20 and then done uh three two p's to make the six so as long as your coins add together to make 26 pence you have got them right